What's up, everybody? It's James, and we are continuing on with our series of Edge Finder how to tutorial videos. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at another piece of the Edge Finder that we haven't really done an in depth look at today. And that is going to be the seasonality section. And you can find that here under fundamental analysis. We have our main uh, little categories here on the left side, but we also have this that says fundamental analysis, and we have some more options under here so seasonality is right here it's the first one and so when we click on that we'll get taken to the seasonality page and so we're looking at US oil right now but let's just go ahead and switch it to gold because it's right up top we're gonna go through and look at a couple of these but let's just start with gold and so what this does is the seasonality metric compares the historical performance of the market in question so in this case we're looking at gold and we are looking at the historical performance month to month. If historically the current month was a positive month for the market, the score is plus one. Otherwise, if it is negative, it receives a score of negative one for this metric. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you the numbers for the months where we are so far. So here we can see the numbers for January and feel free to pause the video because I'm gonna go through these a little bit quicker. So this is our uh, current year average. So this is the gray line, but we can see the numbers for uh, the current year average, all time average and five year average here. So we see uh, the numbers for January in our content, you may have noticed that we occasionally use our own proprietary software to research the markets. This market scanner is called the A1 Edge Finder, and it is a tool our team has spent a lot of time designing and updating. The scanner imports data on things like retail positions to see what retail traders are buying or selling. It also imports bank and hedge fund positioning so that we can get an inside look at what the big players are up to. Of course, we pay attention to fundamentals. So we program the tool to grab economic data in real time to help keep us up to date. If you'd like a copy of the tool yourself, we're doing a major subscriber discount when you use code A1YT at checkout. In the description below, you'll find a link to get access to the tool. By purchasing our software, you'll be supporting our research videos here, as well as getting access to an amazing tool. Again, use code A1YT down below. Now, back to the video. February, March, April, May, June, July, and August. And this line here is our trend line. We can see that overall, that this uh, gold has been uh, trending downward um, below this line. So our trend line is moving downward as well. And we can also go ahead and look at the all time average and last five year average for the month of September. And here's October, November, and December. Okay, and so we have this listed for every single one of our currencies. Um, here, so we had oil open. We can take a look at oil real quick, and then we'll take a look at some currency pairs. So here's January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and August. And I'll go ahead and just show you September as well really quick. We can look at the all-time average and last five-year average for that. And so the reason that this is important is because we can see historically how this market has trended and that will give us a rough idea of what to expect looking forward. So for example, in August, oil is historically low, but going into September, historically, it goes up and that's consistent with the all time average and the last five year average. So if we want to, uh, you know, if the history books repeat itself, then we could see a slight uptick in oil moving into September. Let's go ahead and go back to gold really quickly and just kind of analyze this as well. So we can see that historically speaking, Gold is actually up in the month of August before having a downward trend towards the later end of the year and then back up towards November and December. Now, gold is already on a downward trend and historically speaking, it does continue downward going into September. So that seems likely to me. Let's look at a currency pair. How about, let's see pick one how about euro nzd so 
Let's go ahead and show you the numbers for Euro and ZD first, and then we'll analyze it. So we have January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and now August. And quickly, I'll show you September as well. And so we can see that Euro NZD is down compared to the all time average and last five year average as well. And that makes sense because, you know, the current year average is going to be set. Like that is what's happening this year. So if it's down, it's down. These averages have, you know, lots of other data to bring it up or bring it down. So all time average has years and years and years and years of data to average out. And so some months, you know, years ago may have been really, really high while others not so much. And so the average is going to be, you know, an accurate estimation of what this currency does, but it may look different than uh, the current year average. And that makes that makes sense. That's that's normal. And so last five year average, same thing. So in the last five years, historically, Euro NZD has been up in the month of August. However, in 2022, not so much. But we can see that uh, going into September, it remains relatively, uh, relatively the same. It doesn't really trend upward or downward, at least not in the all time average. The last five year average does have a slight downward trend. So that could be uh, a potential for, for this pair, a slight downward trend. But then we see from September into October, that is a sharp, sharp downward trend. So that's something to keep an eye out for with Euro NZD. Um, the, the possibility of this continue, continuing to go even lower. So of course we have the seasonality page where you can look at all of these individually, but that's not the only place that you can get this information. The awesome part about the edge finder is that it is so detailed. You can go super in depth into any of these different categories here. But as you know, if you're familiar with the edge finder, you can get all of that information uh, in the individual currency breakdown as well. So we were just looking at Euro NZD. Let me see if I can find it really quickly. Euro NZD, do, 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 do. All right, I'll just pick a different one because I don't see it off the top of my head. Uh, USD JPY. So here we go, we're in the USD JPY page. And here right in the middle, you can see our seasonality report. So we have our numbers for January, February, March, April, May, so on and so forth. Here are the numbers for August, however. Look at that crazy spike upwards. Uh, and that's the current year average. So that's what was happening with uh, USD JPY this year from February to April. Look at that. Um, but historically speaking, the current or I'm um, sorry, the all time average and the last five year average, at least going into September and October are pretty much the same um, here, only slight difference in both of those. So you could expect uh, the USD JPY pair to have an upward trend in the next couple months. And look, this downward trend is actually pretty consistent with what we see um, in the all time and last five year averages. So again, the gray line is current year average. And so we had this crazy uptick um, earlier on in the year before it, you know, it has to eventually come back down. And what we see here is that from April to August uh, in the all time average, that there is a downward trend. And that is actually consistent with what we see here. We see that April to August, a downward trend now this one's not quite as sharp as this one but moving forward we do see an upward trend so that's something to keep an eye out for i'm going to go ahead and look at that uh euro nzd because i was just talking about it uh euro nzd we can find it right here as well the score chart summary it holds everything but so does this little side panel right here so here we are in the euro nzd page seasonality report right here in the middle i've already shown you these numbers but you can see that this is the same as what we were just looking at uh, on the other seasonality page 
So that's how you use seasonality when looking for uh, pairs to trade in the edge finder. Again, the seasonality report shows you what a market has done historically. And history is important because oftentimes history tends to repeat itself. So knowing whether or not typically uh, a currency tends to trend upward or downward uh, in the upcoming months is important because historically speaking, it is likely to happen again. So it's something to keep an eye out for when you're making your trades. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we will see you next time.